A bad name is serious. May you meet him, sir. Be the mouthful. Now me, call me. Let me ring what's it that. Me and the moose. Obey to me, I am. I don't know, so we're getting ready. Watch yourself, it's true, friend, oh, yeah, that one. Obey, Jimmy, so. Obey, come, sing, kiss, yeah. Ain't a body, I travel. Oh, yeah, watch the tsunami, yeah. Happy to be here today. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's like it's winter, but it's not winter yet. It's winter. Why are you got? Huh? <laughs> I'm not feeling the cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling. Is it cold here? Is it cold here? No. Sh should you talk to them for them to face the warming? Are you sure? To be a great idea. Uh, yeah. Then you are getting to be at home now. <laughs> <laughs> I've joined the club. Oh, hallelujah. All right, you are far away from me. I've joined this club. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Please bow down your head for a short prayer. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Amen. We bless you for how far you have brought us, Ebenezer. This very morning, you have brought us from our various houses to come before you. And nobody has ever had an encounter with you and remained the same. This morning we have come not to meet man, but we have come to meet our King, our God. Therefore, we thank you. Let our encounter with you, Father, bring a change in our lives. Even as this word is coming, it's not coming from me, but it's coming from you, Lord God Most High. Push me aside, Lord, and speak and use my tongue to let your people hear. I commit every heart unto your hands. Let every heart be receptive unto this word. And before they leave here, they will never remain the same ever again. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Are you happy to be here? Yes. Good. God has prepared a message for somebody here. Amen. And the title of the message is The Church of Jephthah. Mm. The Church of Jephthah. Mm. Not turn up here, WC. Mm. Uh uh. But the church of who? Yeah. Of who? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Who wants to be part of this church? Hey. Do you know the church? I'm talking about the church of Left Town. Hey. Who wants to be part of it? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. well, it's a great church. Yes. By the time it is, um, you're not going to make another church. I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's this church, but it's going to be transformed. Amen. 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 Check that. Where is your Bible? Please, can I have, uh -huh. before I go on, somebody from here, two people even called me that uh, when pastor came, he said we can use our mobile phones in the church. Mm -hmm. I said, well, for me personally, he's my mentor. 
he cannot say one thing and for me to stand here and say another thing. But the phones we have, it has so many things on it, so many. So right now that is to feel like speaking on his phone. Either he is chatting, whatsapping, Facebooking, Instagramming. Can I know that? No. no. And one thing that when you are standing here and you are speaking to people, and you don't have the attention back, it's like you are speaking to a wall. So when you are looking to the mobile phone, we personally, I assume you are chatting. Or you are looking at pictures. I would know. But if I'm speaking here or any man of God stands, man, man of God stands here and speaking to you, you're looking into your Bible, his spirit is connected to you. And the secret behind it. I have a Bible on my phone, but when it comes to matters, I prefer this. I prefer this. So it's my advice to you anyway. Yeah. But if I were you, yeah. I'll get that. Yeah. Secondly, even your own food that you're eating at home, can you spit one side of the bowl and eat the food on the other side? Can you? But it is your food and you only half. Now the half. Can you do that? Nobody will do it. Compare that to your, to your phone and your Bible. You have everything on your phone. Everything. Nice pictures, dirty pictures. Nice messages, dirty messages. They are on the phone and the word of God is on the other side. Judge it yourself. Amen. Amen. But when you have the written word of God, especially with you here in the church, it shows how mature you are. Last time, Brother James made a testimony that he was carrying his Bible to the church. And the sister said, Brother, are you going to church? Yes. Please, give me the address. But I see the Bible in his hands. He pulls someone to Christ. Amen. Amen. So, when you are coming to church, need mute, need mute, but preferably, Amen. Oh, amen. 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 Can somebody pick up his Bible and open with me to the book of Judges, chapter 11? That's why I saw. You see what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. And it will be destructive to everyone. Uh -huh. So, see if your phone is on, turn it to silent or to off. Judges. 11. Then it will not distract amen. anyone. Amen. amen. Judges 11. Yes. From one going. Yes, please. Genesis chapter 11, verse uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. Going, I'm reading from the NIV version. Yes. Jephthah the Galatia was a mighty warrior. His father was Galit. His mother was a prostitute. Galit wife, Galit's wife was also born him sons. And when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. Mm -hmm. You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, mm -hmm. they said. Because you are you are the son of another woman, mm -hmm. so Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, mm -hmm. where a group of adventurers gathered around him and followed him. Some, some time later, when the Ammonites made war on Israel, the elders of Galilee went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Come, they said, be our commander, so we can fight the Ammonites. Mm -hmm. Jephthah said to them, didn't you hate me and drive me? from my father's house. Why do you come to me now when you are in trouble? The elders of Galilee said to him, ne nevertheless, we are, turning, we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Ammonites and you will be our head over all who live in Galilee. Jephthah answered, suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? The leaders of Galilee replied, the Lord is our witness. Mm. We will certainly do as you say. Mm -hmm. So Jephthah went with the elders of Galilee, and the people made him head and commander Spine. over them. And he repeated all his way before the Lord in Mizpah. Mis Amen. Amen. It's okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, sister. Mm -hmm. If the Bible is yours, especially if you have the King James, the song I want you to watch in verse 3. The King James Version says, Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob, T O B, Tob, and worthless. Is the word worthless in your Bible? Yes. Yeah, right? Worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out railing, raging with him. 
Uh, who has the King James? You all have worthless there? Yes. What do you have? Where you got it? Where you got it? No. He said he went to the land of Tob. And what follows? Verse 3, eh? We are reading Judges 11.3. That word is very important in today's sermon. Judges 11.3. The NIV doesn't have it. Is that, does the NIV have, have yours? No, right? Oh, a gang of scoundrels. Okay, all right. Now, the background of this story starts from the chapter 10. When Israel sinned, any time Israel sinned, God hand them over to another country for them to punish Israel. This time, the Ammonites have been dealing with Israel and punishing them. Because God will not take a king from heaven and come down and then beat them. So he makes sure another country does it. So sometimes, if you're going through certain things, somebody's doing things for you, against you, check yourself. Tell the guy behind, beside you, tell him to check himself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Uh, so God handed the Ammonites over to them, and they treated Israel very harsh. So, whenever God does this, God is so merciful that he said, wow, I never thought the Ammonites or this people can discipline Israel for me like that. It's enough. Then God himself will raise up another person who will deliver Israel from that punishment. And this person that God chose to deliver Israel for the Ammonites, his name was Jephthah. Amen. Amen. That's where the chapter 11 begins. Jephthah means he will open. What does he mean? He will, open. he will open. And he was a valiant warrior, a mighty man of honor, but he was not considered for a job as a leader because of his background. What was his background? His father's name was Gilead. Gilead and the mother was a harlot or a prostitute, as the NIV quoted. But the King James says a harlot. Harlot in the uh, Hebrew language is Noshim. Noshim in our modern English is a used woman. A used woman. An adulteress, a concubine. So you see what the NIV and the King James are doing right here? The King James carry more words that when you get back to the original uh, root or the Hebrew, you, the meaning becomes very clear. My sisters here, never ever be a used person. Amen. Never ever be a used person or a concubine. Never. I am married. If I come to you and say, oh, Sister Ophelia, please say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Why? In the sight of God, you are not a prostitute, eh? but it's to repay them for service. But when the Bible says you are a harlot, it's even arrogant, healthy arrogant than a, than a prostitute. A used person. That was the mother of um, Jephthah. The man Gilead was married with his wife. But the man king framed and made a child called Jephthah with this woman. So you can imagine the background of Jephthah. So when the mothers, uh, the mother was there, the brothers and sisters were there happily. Jephthah was also in the house. Now, when they grew up, the real children saw that mm, Jephthah, you, your mother is different. Even though we have the same father, but your mother is different. The Bible did not mention Jephthah's mother's name. But what saddens me here is he used the word a habit. So, in our generation or in our dispensation, sometimes you'll be going for some positions or some certain things that will help you push forward. They always want to check your survey. Hmm. Your experiences. <laughs> Where are you coming from? But this gentleman, he didn't choose to be born by a lot. But the Bible says, the brother said, you have nothing to do with us. Mm -mm. Our father has estate. He has this and that. You, uh, uh, you are not part of everything that our father has. So the Bible says, they hated him until he fled 
from the land of Gilead. Now, the town Gilead is known for one thing. There's a cream or a balm where we use in healing. So whenever you see Gilead, everybody know ah, that city where healing comes from. There's a balm in Gilead. Thank you, Ada. So anytime you want to be healed, you go to Gilead. And the man whose father, or let me say, Jephthah's father's name was Gilead. So if you don't take a human thing that it was Mr. Gilead who formed the town called Gilead. You see what I'm saying? Say, mm -hmm. if I am Mr. Turnout, oh, uh, that means you may, we had a, a town in a Kumasi called Uforikrum. Uforikrum. My grandfather established that town. And all the, my old uncles and, uh, and uh, my grandpas, most of them are Ofori, Ofori. So anybody is Ofori, oh, you are from Uforikrum. So the town was named after this man. So you can see the status of that man, Mr. Gillett, and his son being Jephthah coming from a prostitute or a harlot. So this man was not happy. So they sacked him. And the, NI, the King James said he fled. The way to flee means to run away without nobody to hold him. That's as fast as he could run away. So you can imagine the treat that he went through. The kind of childhood that he went through. The rejection that he went through. The, the sons and daughters will be sitting at the dining table to eat. And Jephthah will be by the uh, gay side on the floor eating. Why? Because he was not considered to be a legitimate child in the family. Most of us are like that. We are being disregarded by a certain group. They cast it as a way, making us feel nobody. But let me tell you, by the preceding of man's rejection, is God's acceptance. Amen. It has happened to me before. I'm like uh, I'm like Jephthah. I have brothers and sisters in Antwerp. Most of you know them. I'm the only son that my father had extra with my mom. Exactly like Jephthah. Exactly. But my father was married with that woman with their own children. I was a surplus. And even when my father died, there was a funeral here in Antwerp. They were mentioning the names of all my father's children. Kabana say, this one, this one, this one, this one. The grandchildren, this one, this one, this one, this one. I was still there. I was there. <laughs> Even their maid in Ghana, maid, house girl, her name was mentioned at the funeral. I was still down there. They didn't mention my name. I said, wow. And I told my wife, let's go. My wife said, no, no, sit down. Sit down. I sat down there. It was not my father that, that pained me, but the rejection I felt. Can you imagine? So when I was reading the Bible some time ago, I, no, that time you were in the old place. That Friday evening, you preached this same sermon about Jephthah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you remember? I remember? When I went home, in fact, I cried. I said, wow. So I have a counterpart in the Bible like that. They forgot to mention my name. That's how painful it is. Society may reject you because they know who you are. What do you see me saying? You're you not part. Please excuse you. Like I said earlier on, God's acceptance always precedes man's rejection. No matter how man rejects you, don't worry. For <clears throat> he who made you didn't make you by mistake. God knew that the woman that Mr. Gilead was having an affair with, God knew it was a sin. God could have closed the womb mm. of that harlot, mm. but he permitted it mm. for it to come to pass. Purpose, we are going through things God permitted for a purpose. Sometimes, tears will weep, I mean, tears will wet your pillow. You feel like you are worthless. Sister, don't worry about that. Amen. God has a purpose for me. Amen. But when this guy fled, the astray and the investor, he went to the land of talk. Talk means good. Anytime you want to understand the Bible very, very well, always link it with the original language, the Hebrew. The Hebrew word for talk is good. So being run away from the land of healing to a land of good, you can imagine. They didn't know or they forget that his name means he will open. Mm. 
So when he fled to the land of good, God said, I'm going to open you now. Amen. Names have meanings. Mm. Before you, you are now young ladies now, before you grow, think about names you give to people, your, your children. They are going to have effect on them. Yes. Now, this man went to the land of good. And when he went to the land of good, the land of top, the Bible says he got up with worthless men. The people who were useless. Even though they are in the land of good, but they were worthless. Vagabonds. Vagabonds. They are worthless. Worthless means are they are for so. It has no worth. And the King James said, uh, the NIV means which word for that? Regardless. Scandals. Scandals. Who did? That's what they did. But they teamed up with this man called Jephthah. He said, Jephthah, you know that you are also a castaway. We too, we are Kwasia for here. Ah, let's gang up. So they gang up. This guy was also skilled. He trained them in fighting, looting, raiding, stealing. One day, Jephthah said, Nay, 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 nay. I can use my skill in a better way. The Bible regarded him as a valiant man of worry. He could fight. What am I driving at? No matter how worthless you think you are, God has put a potential in you. So the name he will open means, he's going to open up Jephthah so that his potentials will come out. Amen. It doesn't matter how things are crooked this time. There's a potential in you that God will use it to change you. Amen. So when they team up, they were so powerful that any war that Jephthah led with this gang of people uh, uh, go to war, they succeed. They get things back. They say, wow, Jephthah, your coming here is good for us. Say, really? You forget what my brothers and sisters did to me. They drove me out. And my coming here is good to you? Say, yes. Baby said, baby, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When he says that, his blood touched the ground. Boom. What happened? There was an earthquake. The curtains were turned into two. The Bible said, those who were dead arose. So what would they say? Ah, he says, your death is good for us. Because mm -hmm. if we did not die, we would we have remained down there. So when one thing is spoiling, mm -hmm. one thing is getting better. Mm -hmm. Don't go in the land of talk. They were worthless guys. If I so be anyone, so people has written them off. The society has said, now nah, go away. Mm -hmm. the society said, no, no, no. We have to standardize you. And then stigmatize you. And then ostracize you. So that you remain where you are forever. But as for us, we have a Jesus. And when he comes in, he will turn all this description to our good. Amen. Amen. We have it in our church. The church is a good place, but sometimes when you look in, it's like we have become worthless. We have good singers, we have people with voices, talented instrumentalists, people who could pray for things to happen, but we are not using any of them. Imagine your grandma has ever been to school before. She can't even read or write her name. And you who have been to university, colleges, you can't even read or you don't read. You and your grandma, what's the difference? That's what I'm saying. There's no difference. That's how we are now. We are in the land of good. The church is a good place. But we are becoming worthless now. We are not using the potentials and the gift that God has given to us. And still biding in us. Where is the church coming from? To come and revive us. To recalibrate us. To revampire us. Where is the Jephthah coming? The Jephthah is the Holy Spirit that is in you. Begin to realize who you are and ask God to now take you to a higher dimension. So when the Ammonites came again to wage war against Israel, right, the elders of Gilead said, Oh, these people have been tormented for quite too long. We need a leader, somebody to lead us. Who did they go to look for? Jephthah. Jephthah, who was ostracized, stigmatized, and made cast away, they went and looked for him and said, Jephthah, we have done you wrong. 
I knew they apologized. Please come and lead us to war. So that when we win the war, you shall be our leader. Somebody whose mother was a harlot, mm. who his own brothers cast out, mm. who they forced for him to run away. Mm. They are now begging him for him to come back and lead them to war. You might think you are useless today. Mm. You might think you are of no value. You might think you are worthless. Mm. But as long as you are in the land of talk, oh, the land of goodness, God will always make something good out of you. Amen. Don't despise yourself. Mm. Whatever that you have to make you good and who you are is already in you. Mm. It's not coming from any outside. It's already in you. Mm. I never thought one day I would grow to be a teacher. From class three, I can catch my mom back those days. Whenever a teacher is not in the classroom, I was very short. I'll take up a chair, stand on it, and begin to write notes on the blackboard for my other people or, or the students to write. Sometimes maths, teacher will explain from exam, you will not understand. Me, the short boy, I'll take a chalk and explain my students will understand anything. Sometimes they like me teaching them that I'm a teacher himself. I never knew that was what God has given it to me until right now. Most of the time people call me about one issue that will be going everywhere. The same thing I will use another way, they will understand me better. What am I saying? What he has given to me, the ability is inside of me. And I am being invited to place that I have never been before. It is my gift, the gift that is bringing me that far. You have it too. You have it. Don't look down upon yourself. If Jephthah had done that, he would have stayed there forever. He saw something in him. He knew that he could fight. He knew how to hold a sword. He knew how to dodge a blow. That was his skills. What about you? Some time ago when I came to you, I think that's first or second time, I taught you guys about potentials. Those things are all inside of you. Jephthah used his own, and he was raising up from being a son of a harlot and to be a leader of a whole nation. It can happen to you. Amen. It's never too late. The very people who rejected Jephthah and treated him worse than his come, they came back crawling and they said, Come, be with us. And when they read the verse 6 and 7, they said, Jephthah, Jephthah, come and be our commander. Now we may fight against the Ammonites. So Jephthah said to the elders of the village, Did you not hate me? Did you people not hate me and expel me from my father's house? Why have you come to me? Now when you are in distress, mm. the same people who will hate you today, oh. and the same people who will come back to you again, mm. yes. they will come kneeling before you. Amen. And you know what has been special? What God has already put inside of you. Jephthah means he will open. My God. God opened the way for Jephthah. Amen. He opened it for you too. Amen. I don't know what has been a burden for you over the years, but today, mm. today, Today, God said it's never too late. Amen. He brought him from the land of healing to the land of good. He can do the same thing to you. In verse 29, verse 32 and 33, the Bible says, Now the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. Why did the Spirit of God come upon Jephthah? Because he communicated with God. He prayed to God. Not just the people came to him and said, Jephthah, come and let's go to war. He just picked up and began to go. No, no, no. He took the face of God first. People, in your decision time, have time to pray. In times where things are critical, have time to pray. Don't just seek answers and advice from friends and relatives. No. Seek first God's face. Mm. And when Jephthah did that, the Bible says, the Spirit of God came upon him. He went ahead and defeated the enemies. I don't know what stands ahead of you, sister and brother. But if you look to the face of the Lord first, he will let you know that he indeed is God. Mm. His Spirit will come before you. And before you realize, you will subdue all your enemies under you. So Jephthah ran from being a zero to a hero. Oh, he became man. like Joseph. Who was hated by his... It has happened before. Joseph was like that. His own brothers hated him. But they put him in the pit. That time God said, hey, get ready to jump. When he went to uh, Egypt, he was thrown into uh, a, a prison. 
God said, no problem, be there. God placed the problem in the palace mm. and put the solution in the prison mm. and connected them together. That's the God we serve. Somewhere, somewhere, there's a problem. We know one thing about we, we Africans or Ghanaians, let me say it that way, we always run away from problems. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. If you want to be successful in life, mm -hmm. embrace problems. Mm -hmm. If a glass is broken, mm -hmm. you throw it away. Uh -uh. To the sculptor, you can fit and make something beautiful, beautiful out of it. Mm -hmm. God place the problem in the palace and put the solution in the prison and he connected both together. That was what made Joseph to ride from the prison straight to the palace. Mm. What is your problem? What's your problem? No, I don't like preaching. I like teaching. But I think this one is for somebody here. Mm. No matter how down you look, no matter how bad you feel like you've been stigmatized, it's never too late. Never give up. Hold on. Pray to your God that God, if you can change the son of Harold, who people disregarded and even kicked out of his own father's house? Uh uh, you can change mine. You can change mine. People make mistakes. Therefore, they didn't find out what does the name of Jephthah mean. He will open. They didn't wonder the countries around Gilead. If we sack this guy, where will he go? If they had thought that he go to the land of good, they would say, ah, they better stay here because the land of good is already good. People don't think far. Our uh, God, He looks far. Amen. He thinks far. Amen. He can see your tomorrow from today. Amen. 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 What is your problem? The main lesson I want you to draw, I want you to draw from this, this uh, uh, thing is that no matter how difficult your circumstances and painful it might be, sometimes in our, our age, our subjects we do at school, they are so challenging that people say, ah, you can you you share a this court? Ah, my friend, forget it. Even that guy couldn't do what about you. Historical references. Yeah, they refer you. <laughs> but hold on to it. Amen. God, who has given you that vision, He will always, always make sure He give you what it takes to bring it to pass. Amen. God has a way of doing things. When others do not do it, God loves us and accepts us the way that he, we are. God didn't reject Jephthah because the mother was a harlot. No. He used the same thing that people rejected. My God. And then he confirmed the wise with it. This thing happened to our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he came unto his own. His own received him not. But they that believed him and even accept his name, he gave them the power to become the children of God. Amen. It happened to Jesus. It happened to Joseph. It happened to Jephthah. Why all the JJJ people? Mm -hmm. You can tell me here. Jesus, Joseph, and Jephthah, mm -hmm. they were all rejected. Who can tell me the reason why their name begins with JJJ? Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching, so I won't have uh, learned what's it. Next time. Uh -huh. Not that they are James too. James was beheaded. They cast him off to prison. And they beheaded him. I will not go to the jails today. Next time. <laughs> Amen. But what I want to say is that we should write about our circumstances. <laughs> if you always think about the pain, you will not you will forget about the gain. One other thing you should know about these two people, Joseph and Jephthah, is that they didn't have a pain in their heart. They had a spirit of forgiveness. That's what is killing us today. Our tantes, our uncles, somebody, a friend, did us something some months ago. We can't let the pain go. If Jephthah had not forgiven the people of Gilead, he wouldn't have come back and lead them to war. If Joseph did not forgive his brothers, he wouldn't have welcomed them to the land of Egypt. Let's try to forgive. I know you see the word try. No, no, no. We should forgive. Amen. Remove every bitterness from you. Amen. Otherwise, God will bring you to the land of good, but because of bitterness in your heart, He can't use you. David said, If I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Iniquity is something that you pretend that it's not. Air hostess, I don't like her. But when I see her, hello, sister, how are you? 
I pretend I see everything is nice. But I know deep inside of me, I don't like you. What you did to me some yesterday months ago, it still pains me and I can't forgive you and I still hate you for who you are. But when that bitterness is not gone out of you, your prayer will be like a smoke, it will fall back on you. Jephthah didn't do so. He forgave the people of Gilead and he came back. Joseph did not do the same thing. He forgave his brothers, his, his brothers and he welcomed them into Egypt. Before God can use you to, uh, I mean, to bring you up from where you have been ostracized, you need to let what you call bitterness get out of you. Forgive all those who had done anything against you. God was with him when he was placed in the pit. I'm talking about Joseph. He was there with him. He was being prepared for elevation ahead. When he was being sold into slavery in Egypt, God was telling him, don't worry, very soon you're going to buy your own people. Mm. But he couldn't have done that if bitterness was in his heart. Let's forgive those who have wronged us. Yeah. They are not important. Uh -uh, uh -uh. They are stumbling block. If somebody offends you and you can't forgive, the person becomes like a stumbling block in front of you. You can't get ahead of him and do what God says you should do. Let it go. Today I'm looking for people who are going to be part of Jephthah's church. The church of Jephthah. It's those who society have said, you are nothing. You are worthless. You have nothing good inside of you. Your mother is a harlot. You don't respect you. Get away from here. But God turns things to their own God. Amen. It can always be done by only one means. By being able, able to forgive. May the Lord bless us today. Amen. May He empower us. Amen. Anywhere we go, anywhere we stand, we not only look at our history or from where we came back or what other people have done to us, but we should focus on where God is taking us. But so doing, He's going to revive you, recalibrate you, re-energize you, and let whatever He has given you inside of you will come to life Amen. and to come to pass. May the Lord bless you. Amen. He says, Amen. 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 Let me ask you, you are going to pray shortly. Be your feet on your feet. And let's pray. I want you to thank God for what he has told you today. Maybe your situation is like Jephthah's. You need somebody to remind you his word has come. Somebody thank God for today's message. Thank God. Father, today we thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. You are spoken to us today through your son. Jephthah as an example unto us. Father, we thank you that your word has come. We didn't know that today you speak to us in this area. But now you have let us know 